Elmer's Pet Rabbit, which is the second appearance of Bugs Bunny, Cheerios is first introduced as Cheery Oats by General Mills, and Joe DiMaggio's 56-game hitting streak begins as New York Yankees center fielder goes one for four against Chicago White Sox pitcher Eddie Smith in baseball. The year is 1941, and this Packard could be bought at any Packard showroom. But before getting into all of it, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like, the automotive channel that focuses on the cars that are being forgotten. Pre-war cars, Art Deco cars are so cool. And I'm sorry, I'm breaking from the script a little bit. And it's just really sad. You don't ever see these cars. But we cover the classics, vintage, some exotics, lots of orphan cars, and cars that are frankly being forgotten. We dive in deep on the history, specs, and design of these rolling works of art. If that sounds like a channel that you will totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. This 1941 Packard 120 is currently for sale at Classic Auto Mall, Morgantown, Pennsylvania, with over 870 cars for sale when recording this episode. Anybody can go there. It's free to get in. For more information, pricing, and pictures pertaining to this very car, be sure to click the link below after the show. 1941 Packard model lineup, you had the 110, which replaced the 115C in 1940, which rode a wheelbase of 122 inches. It was also called Series 1900, followed by the 120, which rode a wheelbase of 127 inches, which came in Series 1901, followed by the 160, which was the Super 8. It was available in three series, 1903, 1904 and 1905, three wheelbase configurations, 127, 138, and 148. Up next was the 180 series or Custom 8. It was also available in three series, 1906, which rode a wheelbase of 127 inches, 1907, 138 inches, and 1908, 148 inch wheelbases. And then there was the Clipper, which was the series 1951, and it rode a wheelbase of 127 inches. Packard introduced the 120 in 1935. Packard needed to tap into a lower price point to sell cars. The Great Depression was wreaking havoc on industry, not just the auto industry, but all industry, because people didn't have money to buy food, let alone cars or lavish things. And looking around at that point, the American luxury car market was hurting. Two years later, Packard would come out with the 115C, which was their entry-level Packard. This Packard could be bought for about a hundred or so dollars more than a Ford or Chevy, which was crazy. It's like offering a Rolls-Royce level car at a Ford price. But it wasn't all rainbows and butterflies. Die-hard Packard enthusiasts felt like Packard was watering down the prestigious brand. Have to remember, Packard was one of the three Ps. Pierce Arrow, Peerless, Packard. And make no mistake, the 115, later 110, and 120 did save the company because once the smoke cleared, Packard was the only independent luxury company left in the United States. Both Peerless, Pierce Arrow, Duesenberg, Auburn, Cord, Franklin, Hotmobile, they were all gone. Packard would offer the 120, which replaced the Light 8 from 1935 to 1937. They took a break. For whatever reason, there isn't a 120 in 1938. They came back in 1939 to 1941. World War II happened, and then after the war, the Packard 200 replaced it. 1941 Packard 120 could be had as a two-door coupe, two-door convertible, two-door sedan, four-door sedan, and four-door woody wagon. 1941 is more or less a carryover body design with some key differences. So let's compare 40 on top, 41 on the bottom, starting in the front, similar yet different. The biggest change is how the lights are mounted. On the 40, the lights are mounted to pedestals in the catwalk area, whereas the lights are mounted inside the fenders on the 41. So the fenders are different as are the bumpers and the marker lights, side grills, become taller and more fuller on the 41. Hood side moldings differ between these two models. 
Moving to the side profile, both front and rear fenders are different. The 41 has side moldings that aren't found on the 40. Look at the cabin area between these two. The 41 looks taller. It also has bright work around the windows, not found on the 40. The 40 has a hump back trunk, whereas the 41 trunk is more integrated into the body. Moving to the rear, I have a confession to make. The 41 has been flipped. The gas door is on the driver's side, whereas the 40 has a gas cap on the driver's side. Here is a better look at the trunk situation. Tail lights are different, as are the bumpers. Split rear glass on the 40 versus single piece on the 41. Moving inside to take a better look at the dash, the 40 has rectangular gauges, except for the speedometer and the clock, which are circular and round knobs throughout, whereas everything, or most everything, is rectangular on the 41 with accenting circular pulls throughout. Which one do you like better in the comments section below? Let's talk specs. This car rides a wheelbase of 127 inches. It weighs 3,500 pounds. Price, $1,300, which is equivalent to you spending $27,033.90 in the year 2023. Total 1941 Packard production was 66,906 units, of which total 120 production was 17,100 units. Moving on to engines, only one engine on offer for the 120, that was the 281 cubic inch displacement, flathead eight, 4.6 liters. It was good for 120 horsepower, 3,200 RPM, 225 pound feet of torque at 1,800 RPM. Bore of 3.3 inches in a stroke of 4.3 inches. Compression, standard compression was 6.41 to one. Optional was 6.85 to one. Featured five main bearings. Side note, in 1939, Packard switched from aluminum heads back to the cast iron heads. So this one has a cast iron block as well as cast iron head. Transmissions, you had the three speed uni mesh transmission you could also get optional overdrive which cut engine speed by 27.8 percent let's talk styling just look at all of the different levels going on with this absolutely gorgeous design we have the goddess of speed up here aka donut pusher that's what some people call her Also, just take a look at how this looks top down. I love all of the lines, all of the detail work. I love how this is just pushed up. Check out these side grills. Also notice the headlights are placed in the fenders themselves. This one's painted body color in the comment section. Is it the bezel supposed to be body colored? So look at these bumpers. So look at all of the different levels. Packard logo there in the center. This one has four bumperettes and or overriders. Bars. Accessory lights. Headlights, marker lights. Beautiful 120 script right there. So notice these wheel wells. They don't have a bead, they're not flared. Some nice body molding there right on the bottom of this fender section. This car does have side mounts. Look at these mirrors. I'm not sure if this is stock or if somebody added that after the fact. I never saw a rectangular mirror on a Packard from this era. Coming up and looking at the hood section. Look at the hood profile, two-piece butterfly hood. This does have a cowl vent. 
I love the fact that the windshield comes to a point right here. Center line, two piece windshield, and antenna is mounted at the top, which I think is just classy. All steel roof on this one, and it does have drip rails that run the length of the car. Running boards are pretty wide. Here's my foot for reference. The heel of my foot does overhang a little bit. It does taper back into the body quite a bit once you get to the rear. That's what that looks like. This car is teardrop shaped. The widest point is right here. Just look at how these windows are all framed out. Hinges, rear fender, and it doesn't have any gravel guards, which I think is kind of weird. But just look at how smooth this is. Gas door on the driver's side, which I believe is the correct side if you're in America. More bright bars down here. And notice this how this curves back here. Tail lights. The bumpers mimic the front bumpers. Nice Packard script there in the center. While we're back here, let's get in the trunk. Guess we're not getting in the trunk because it's hitting off this overrider. That, that's weird. Before getting inside, just look at this door handle and how it's designed. Notice these doors aren't straight. They curve as they go down. And this door is all framed out. Armrest. Door handle to get out. The window crank for the big window and it operates like this. This thing has massive vent windows. Which operate like that. Notice they're not crank operated. Take a look at this interior. Coming down inside the pedal box down here. High beam switch. Hand brake, clutch, brake, gas pedal. Notice the steering wheel shaft goes in between the clutch and the brake pedal. Look at how flat the floor is. There's no transmission tunnel in this car, despite it being rear wheel drive. Here is what over the hood looks like. What a magnificent view. Here is what first person over the hood looks like. I love the over the hood view. What an incredible over the hood view that is. That view, that hood looks like it's six foot long and the lady leading the way, it would be awesome driving this car. Underneath the steering wheel, there is space in between my lap and the steering wheel. And the only reason I show that is because if you're big, you might not fit in these cars. On to the button switches and knobs, starting on the left and moving right. Amp meter, gasoline gauge, speedometer, upper beam or high beam indicator light, odometer, overdrive light, coolant temperature, oil pressure, headlights, panel lights, hand throttle, starter button, key, lighter, overdrive, heat controls, defroster, wipers, ashtray. This car has radio delete clock. Up above. There are sun visors. They're a bit on the big side, but they're a bit stiff. Rear view mirror here, same thing. Sun visor over there. Coming to the rear door, and just notice this opens up 90 degrees to allow plenty of access to get into the rear. No armrest on this door 
panel itself, but there are armrests on the seat themselves. Door handle to get out, lock and unlock the door, window crank for the big window, operates like this. And that's all the further it goes down. Take a gander inside, just like the front, notice there isn't a transmission tunnel. This is what the front looks like from the back. Let's take a quick gander at the pillar to glass ratio greenhouse. That is what visibility looks like out the rear from the rear seat. There is a nice parcel shelf there as well as a dome light right above the rear window. There aren't any coat hooks over there nor on this side, but there is a nice grab handle to hold on to on both sides. The seat profile is reclined. The seat does dip down in the back back here, but it's not bad. There is a ton of space back here. Here is my knee. So it's like forearm to middle finger, probably about a foot and a half of space. Very, very comfortable back here. This has a robe rail to put a heavy blanket on in the winter time because the heaters weren't that great. So if you got cold, you could put a blanket on. This one has an ashtray right there. Also has a footrest to rest your feet on. Armrest and center right there. These vent windows do open in the back. They open like that. How cool is that? This is what I look like sitting in the back. I got tons, I got tons of room and I totally get it. People wore hats back in the day and that's why you have so much head space. But I don't feel claustrophobic at all in this car. If you have a family and you're looking for a good car to transport people in, this would be a really good car. This would be a really good wedding car. There's tons of space back here. Bride with big poofy dress can fit back here and drive them all over in a Packard. It would, that would be really cool. If you have a bunch of friends that you'd like to take to the car show, you could fit five, six people in here depending on how big the people are. It's a pretty nice sized car inside here. Coming to the under the hood section. So, do you see anywhere that might be a hood release? There wasn't one inside. The hood release is right here. So that's how you release it. And then it's just this top part here. And look, it butterflies up. Oh, how cool is that? But look at the engine. It's like way down inside. It's so far down inside there. You'd have to be tall or you need a ladder to work on it. Oil bath air cleaner on top here. Beautiful straight eight, just way down inside. Go to the other side and open it up. see the steering shafts going down inside the steering box itself the distributors on this side look at how the distributors angled in there it's very interesting oil filter is in this can notice it's not in the block it just has lines going up to it dual horns stacked one on top of one another and the coil is placed right next to it carburetor exhaust intake is below it on the positive side timeless elegant design and in my opinion this looks better than anything mercedes-benz has made in the last 50 years quality easy to read gauges awesome over the hood look view this car has a presence 
that nothing has that is on sale now against it. Body parts, trim parts, they may be hard to find depending on the model. To me, even though that this is a junior Packard, the gauges don't live up to the rest of the car. And I feel that way about the steering wheel as well. I'm not a huge fan of the steering wheel. All right, now it's time for Would You Rather, two scenarios today. In the first scenario, would you rather have a 1941 Packard 110 four-door sedan or a 1941 Packard 120 four-door sedan or a 1941 Packard 160 four-door sedan. I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free. Pause the video. Now moving to the second scenario. 1941 Cadillac Series 62 or 1941 Packard 120 or... 1941 Lincoln Zephyr. I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free. Pause the video. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to get both the name of the band and song title correctly in the comment section will have their comment pinned to the top of it. That is an incredible song. It plays on the song that was Name That Tune yesterday, and then tomorrow's Name That Tune is going to expand on it a little bit more. But it actually makes me really sad because that song is so happy, and we just lost a lot of that happiness over the years. But anyway... Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below or check out our Facebook group. I call it the after party. Send me a direct message on there. That's honestly the easiest way. If you don't have Facebook and would still like to reach me, send me an email. All of it will be linked in the description below. Just know I appreciate all of the support. And until next time, toodaloo! box introduced us when the 60s were still young. If you got the money, honey, got the nickels one by one. I tried to imitate that song.